My friends, welcome to the Word Exposed. Join me in contemplating the Lord present in the Holy Scriptures today, the second Sunday of Easter, also called Sunday of Divine Mercy. The Gospel today presents to us the moving encounter of the risen Lord with His disciples who had been praying and hiding in the cenacle since His crucifixion. In their reunion, Jesus sent them to become His witnesses and agents of forgiveness as He breathed on them the Holy Spirit. We can also learn from the Apostle Thomas. The merciful Lord visits even those who initially doubt Him. According to Jesus, the Holy Spirit will not invent new truth. The Holy Spirit will lead us to the truth that Jesus has already taught. When you have the Holy Spirit, you can speak and explore different languages to address people of different needs. Barriers and boundaries of discrimination, division, and injustice should disappear. The diversity of the gifts should not be a hindrance to the strengthening of the Church. God chooses all. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. They devoted themselves to the teaching of the Apostles and to the communal life, to the breaking of bread, and to the prayers. Awe came upon everyone, and many wonders and signs were done through the apostles. All who believed were together and had all things in common. They would sell their property and possessions and divide them among all according to each one's need. Every day they devoted themselves to meeting together in the temple area and to breaking bread in their homes. They ate their meals with exaltation and sincerity of heart, praising God and enjoying favor with all the people. And every day the Lord added to their number those who were being saved. The Word of the Lord. Our first reading for this Sunday is taken from the Acts of the Apostles. It is Divine Mercy Sunday. Let us reflect on healing wounds by touching them. I know it is not pleasant to look at wounds. It is more unpleasant to touch wounds. But it is by looking at them and touching them that healing occurs. In the first reading, we are a bit surprised that the Christian community, which is a fruit of the resurrection, remains a community with needs. In other words, even with the risen life and with Pentecost, the wounds of society and of history somehow remain. But here is the crucial point. The community called the church did not turn its eyes away from the needs and the wounds of people. The Christian community born out of the resurrection of Christ did not pretend oh, that everything is okay, there are no more needs, there are no more tears, no more wounds. No. Part of this spirituality of Easter is the courage to face the wounds, to look at them, to touch them. And from seeing and touching the wounds, the power of the resurrection shone forth. The community acted. Realizing the needs, they acted. And what did they do? They shared their resources, they shared their goods, they sold what they had owned, 
and gave to the apostles the proceeds from the sale of their properties. Why? So that from the proceeds, the needs of the community, the wounds of the community could be met and healed. Of course, it would mean you would inflict some wound on yourself. They would lose some of their properties. They would deny themselves of some comfort. But no matter, new life. How could you live comfortably when you see the wounded and you know that you have the capacity to respond to them? So the early Christian community was a community of sharing, a community of self-denial, a community that really experienced dying and rising with Jesus. But that enabled them to look squarely at the wounds of society, touch those wounds, make those wounds their own, and feeling the pain and the needs of others, they respond. And their pain becomes a source of joy. There was no needy person in the community. What a witness to the power of the resurrection. It has been a while now since we started this program in 2008. From day one, you have been with us, our dear friends, assisting us with open hands. We are inviting you once again to be our partners in this ministry. Following the mandate of the Lord to bring the good news to all, we can continue to broadcast and reach more people with your support, bringing the good news to them through television and the internet. Friends, your offering would be very much appreciated. Thank you. May the Lord reward you a hundredfold. A reading from the first letter of Peter. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who in His great mercy gave us a new birth to a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead to an inheritance that is imperishable, undefiled, and unfading, kept in heaven for you, who by the power of God are safeguarded through faith to a salvation that is ready to be revealed in the final time. In this you rejoice, although now for a little while you may have to suffer through various trials, so that the genuineness of your faith, more precious than gold that is perishable even though tested by fire, may prove to be for praise glory, and honor at the revelation of Jesus Christ. Although you have not seen Him, you love Him. Even though you do not see Him now, yet believe in Him, you rejoice with an indescribable and glorious joy as you attain the goal of your faith, the salvation of your souls. The Word of the Lord. Our second reading on this Divine Mercy Sunday is taken from the first letter of Peter. We have been reflecting on healing. Oh, Divine Mercy is about healing. But healing happens when wounds are seen and touched. In the first reading from the Acts of the Apostles, we see the community born out of the resurrection mindful of the wounds of the poor. They looked at those wounds. They touched those wounds, the needs of the poor. And having seen and touched those wounds, they were moved to act. So they denied themselves. They sold what they had so that others 
may live. A beautiful way of healing the, the wounds of society. Allowing oneself to be wounded also. To die somehow. And by the power of the resurrection, I could make a difference in the lives of people. In the second reading, St. Peter tells us that it is by the mercy of God that we have new life in the risen Jesus Christ. Yes, it is not because of any merit on our part that we share in Jesus' risen life. It is simply by God's mercy. And we enjoy an imperishable inheritance. For Jesus will not die again. And so His victory is eternal. Our inheritance will not be taken away anymore. It is also an eternal gift. Oh, we don't deserve this. But thanks to the merciful God. But after assuring His readers of this imperishable inheritance, this gift that will endure thanks to the resurrection, St. Peter reminds them, Oh, you will still experience many trials. The resurrection, the victory of the resurrection, does not eliminate wounds. Some of us will say, oh, what's the point of the resurrection? I thought with the resurrection, all wounds, all problems would be erased. And now, St. Peter is telling us, you will undergo trials for a while. But what is the purpose of that? Is that not contrary to the victory of the resurrection? No. The resurrection is not a promise that life would suddenly be magically immune from all trials and pain. That's not the resurrection. But I think also, St. Peter is telling us it is good for us who believe in the risen Lord to be wounded also, to share in the wounds of Christ that led to the resurrection. And also, through those wounds, we are purified in faith. It is easy to say, I believe in you, Lord, when everything is going well. But the moment trials come, Will I still believe? The wounds make us humble. The wounds could even make us see our own weaknesses and mortality. But hopefully those wounds and trials will lead us to deeper faith. In that, in that way, the wounds heal our weak faith. It, the wounds would also strengthen our feeble faith. So yes, touch the wounds and there will be healing. The Proclamation of the Holy Gospel According to John On the evening of that first day of the week, when the doors were locked, where the disciples were for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood in their midst and said to them, Peace be with you. When he had said this, he showed them his hands and his side. The disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. And when he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit, whose sins you forgive are forgiven them, and whose sins you retain are retained. Thomas, called Didymus, one of the twelve, was not with them when Jesus came. So the other disciples said to him, 
We have seen the Lord. But he said to them, Unless I see the mark of the nails in his hand, and put my finger into the nail marks, and put my hand into his side, I will not believe. Now a week later, his disciples were again inside, and Thomas with them. Jesus came, although the doors were locked, and stood in their midst and said, Peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, Put your finger here and see my hands, and bring your hand and put it into my side, and do not be unbelieving, but believe. Thomas answered and said to him, My Lord and my God. Jesus said to him, Have you come to believe because you have seen me? Blessed are those who have not seen and have believed. Now Jesus did many other signs in the presence of his disciples that are not written in this book. But these are written that you may come to believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and that through this belief you may have life in his name. The Gospel of the Lord Our Gospel on this uh, Divine Mercy Sunday is taken from St. John. We have been reflecting on healing wounds by looking at them and touching them. In the first reading, the Christian community born of the resurrection and Pentecost was not blind to the wounds of the poor and the needy. They looked at those wounds, they touched those wounds, and they acted on it. They denied themselves of their own wealth so that others may live, so that others' needs might be met. Yes, there is healing if we take the wounds of others seriously. In the second reading, St. Peter reminds his readers that it is by God's mercy that we have inherited eternal life but that does not excuse us or exempt us from wounds, trials in this world. But those wounds are not to be avoided. Those wounds are really a help to us. They help us be purified and strengthened in our faith. When we know our wounds, we also know we need to rely on God. And so that's a form of healing by recognizing our wounds. In the gospel, we find Jesus appearing to the disciples. He came not to take revenge, not to make the disciples who were already afraid of the Jews more afraid. He came to heal. He came with the greeting of peace, the offer of reconciliation, forgiveness, and mission. But he first showed them his wounded hands and side. Look at this. I would have imagined that the risen Lord, triumphant over sin and death, would not anymore carry in his glorious body the marks of his pain, humiliation, and death. But no, the resurrection does not devalue the cross. The resurrection does not erase the power and the pain of the cross. In fact, the resurrection retains those wounds. But Thomas was not with them, and Thomas did not believe when the, the other disciples told him, we had seen the Lord. He said, unless I touch those wounds and put my hand on his side, I would not believe. And the day came when the risen Lord appeared to them again and told Thomas, Come, touch my wounds. Put your hands into my side and believe. 
I could imagine how Thomas felt. Not only embarrassed or ashamed, but, oh, I will put my finger into the wounds of his hands and my whole hand into his wounded side. Our young people would say, oh, gross. But it is only after seeing the wounds, touching the wounds, was Thomas able to say, my Lord and my God. What St. Peter said in the second reading, when you look at your wounds, your trials, and the trials that Jesus bore for us, then your faith will increase. We are afraid of wounds. We are afraid to look at the wounds of Jesus present in the wounds of our brothers and sisters. Yes, because wounds are not pleasant to look at. But maybe we're, we are afraid because we do not want to face and to touch our own wounds. We want to live in this fantasy world where I am strong, I am immortal, I have the solution to everything. My insurance policy would guarantee me safety. The airbag of my car will make me safe. The gym where I am enrolled will keep me healthy until the second coming of Christ. Oh, the world has become an expert in denying wounds. And so, our hearts are hardened. And when the heart is hardened, we start inflicting wounds. We don't heal wounds. We don't feel for the other. But by looking at our own wounds and the wounds of others, hopefully there will be compassion, there will be reconciliation, there will be mutual understanding, and there will be healing. And let us not think that it is a defeat on our part, that it is uselessness on the part of the risen Lord, to keep his wounds. No, it is by those wounds that healing happens. My dear brothers and sisters, don't be afraid to look at your own wounds and realizing how wounded I am, hopefully I would have the courage to look and touch, to look at the wounds of others, to touch them with the healing mercy of Jesus. I was a bit surprised the first time I encountered one of our priests who so calmly told me, Bishop, I was a former drug addict and I spent time in prison. I was a bit shocked, but at the same time, I admired him. He did not hide his woundedness. And immediately after that, he said, it is by realizing over and over again how wounded I am, and by God's grace, I have been clean these past years, and God's mercy, I was accepted to the seminary, and now I'm a priest because I remember my wounds. I now minister to prisoners and drug addicts. He sees his own wounds in them, and they see their wounds in his wounds. And they see a brother. He sees a neighbor. And in that love, in that wounded heart, present in each one, there is healing. You could see the risen Lord bearing the wounds of the world, offering them see, touch, and hopefully we will be able to say in faith, my Lord 
and by God. The word has been exposed. Let us now fulfill it. It has been a while now since we started this program in 2008. From day one, you have been with us, our dear friends, assisting us with open hands. We are inviting you once again to be our partners in this ministry. Following the mandate of the Lord to bring the good news to all, we can continue to broadcast and reach more people with your support, bringing the good news to them through television and the internet. Friends, your offering would be very much appreciated. Thank you. May the Lord reward you a hundredfold. During the great jubilee of the year 2000, Pope John Paul II declared that throughout the church, the second Sunday of Easter would be celebrated and dedicated to the divine mercy. So let us reflect on this beautiful gift of the risen Lord. In 2002, Pope John Paul II remarked during his inauguration of the Shrine of Divine Mercy in Poland, Apart from the mercy of God, there is no other source of hope for mankind. Having first-hand experience of the horrors of war and being alone in facing trying moments of his life, the saintly Pope knew very well the hope and consolation that could come only from God's mercy. This is why throughout his pontificate, he frequently underlined the power of God's mercy. It gives us hope and helps us understand the immense love of God for humanity. And we witness the confidence of the Polish Pope in God's mercy until the end of his life. He may have gone weak physically, but his faith in the merciful God, whom he believed was accompanying him, did not falter. Now, the spread of devotion to the divine mercy, as we know and practice it, is credited to Sister Faustina Kowalska. The Polish mystic recorded in her diary the apparitions of Jesus who introduced himself as King of Divine Mercy and who sent her to spread this devotion. Sister Faustina quoted the risen Jesus as saying, Humanity will never find peace until it turns with trust to the Divine Mercy. It is a call for each of us to remember the essence of His crucifixion, where God's infinite mercy flowed to all of humankind, as symbolized by the blood and water that gushed forth from the pierced heart of Jesus. It is a call for each of us to remember what His resurrection accomplished for us. Mercy defeated malice and death caused by sin. God's mercy paved the way for the possibility of a transformed life infused with God's grace, charity, mercy, and justice. Without God's mercy, we would all be condemned to eternal despair and death. And so we are called to return to divine mercy. Behold Him risen, look at His wounds, and find His peace. I could only agree with Pope Benedict XVI who said, From divine mercy, which brings peace to hearts, genuine peace flows into the world. Peace between different peoples, cultures, and religions. Saint Faustina is known today as the Apostle of Divine Mercy. 
and we can follow her footsteps. How? Pope Francis teaches us. So there, brothers and sisters, let us trust in God's divine mercy, and let us be its ardent apostles to the world. Here are some points we prepared for your reflection. The first point is, what personal wounds do I want the merciful Jesus to touch? Anong mga personal na sugat ang gusto kong hilumin ni Kristong maawain? The second point is, how could I be an agent of healing in today's wounded world? Papaano ako magiging daan ng paghihilom sa mundo nating sugat-sugatan? Most loving and almighty Father, by the coming of your Son, Jesus, to the world, you revealed your face to us. By his death on the cross, your mercy flowed to the world from his pure heart. By his resurrection, you revealed that you are the God of life, love, peace, mercy, and light. Father, we easily forget Remind us that we are created in your image, that every breath is your gift, that you made us stewards of your creation and of each other, that we are your children. By the power of the Holy Spirit, strengthen our faith that we may not lose our way. Deepen our hope that we may not despair. Revive every heart that has grown cold Make it like the heart of Jesus, aflame with love for you and neighbors. Together with Mary, our mother, hear our prayer in Jesus' most holy name. Amen. My friends, thank you for joining me this morning. May the Lord present in the scriptures make your heart burn for love of Him and move you to love others. Until next Sunday, only here on The Word Exposed.